Okay, so now that we have both of our produced consumed data is up, let's actually write some of this information down. So we'll just change this back to all tags. All right, so we're seeing all tags in here. Now, how would you do a, a watchdog? Now I'm gonna show you basically side by side how to do a basic watchdog. Um, something really, really, really simple. Uh, so on the very first one, we'll come over here and do a math function and we'll just take our produced data which is going to be our produced data from this. And we're gonna go that plus one. Now let's zero this data out because obviously we don't wanna do anything. Zero that data out and let's add it against itself. Now when I wanna have a bit on the back side of here that say if basically if the bit hits the last and fills up the last data, then I wanna have it actually reset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the data after it, it exceeds itself. This is basically just a scroll. But right, if you think about this as you're scrolling through the information, right? Uh, now at this point in time, we can use a clear or we can use, let's say, I would say a clear is probably best. Uh, and then we're going to clear the data. So all we're going to say is let the data sit there and accumulate and when the final bit happens then it's going to reset itself now we have the data that's coming over here and you can see and in the processor 2 or machine 2 you can see the data is scrolling up and down okay so this is one way to do it right so that it, instead of using a timer it's using the actual values based upon how the scan time is based upon the processor uh, it's a lot more efficient and quicker quicker and easier i think now uh, we'll do the same thing over here uh, we'll come over here and do our first wrong and uh, we'll spread this out a little bit and get our math function and we'll do our add we'll go ahead and add in our bit which is our bit right here and then we'll do a clear which if we come over here I believe it's in clears and move we'll come over here and then we'll grab our produced data this is the produced data against itself we're just going to add a one to it and let's see where this out so you get, get to see the best implementation. And then we're gonna grab the last instance of this, which is bit 31. Now, when bit 31 comes up high, it's it, all it's saying is that you've, you've entered, you've filled up all your data, right? All of the data is filled up inside of that dent. Um, that's all we're saying here, right? So it's not very complex, you know, it's, it's pretty simple, right? When the dent data, if you go look at it, when the dent fills up to value 31, that goes high, that means you're obviously, you're filled out, right? Oh, the binary of that specific uh, instance is being used, right? It, and as soon as that's being used, we wanna clear the data to reset it. Now that we have that set up, we can actually do a watchdog, right? We can do a standard timer. So we'll add another rung and we'll do a timer and we'll add a rung here so we're gonna call this, uh, in this processor, we'll, we'll call it watchdog timer. And I like to, when I, my words separate, I like the, to make sure they're capitalized. And then we'll keep this something simple like, uh, generally between uh, two processors, you, you generally wanna keep it around you know, two and a half seconds, maybe even more than that if you have a bigger processor. In my eyes, I mean, I honestly am going from emulate to emulate and the same exact PC, so I can go a little bit smaller, but uh, let's just do a base implementation of two and a half seconds. Now, what we wanna do is actually get the data from here. So we wanna use the data. So now we're gonna do a compare and we'll say not equal to, and let's add another uh, rung down here add another rung down here and we're going to use this as the done and if this goes done right if this watchdog goes done then we want to say that there is a comms fault at that point in time we'll just make a bit that says and you can use this throughout your program uh communication fault com fault real simple real easy so if the watchdog timer finishes then that's what happens now here's what we want to do in here we want to grab this and actually we want to make a a, uh, a new data right which is going to be a dent still 
in our environment this is just a dent so we're going to call this watchdog watchdog compare and let's separate that a little bit and it's going to be a dent because we're going to load a dent into a dent right we're going to compare a dent against a dent and that's simple so in this atmosphere we want to get the data that's consumed from machine 2 and then we're going to load this so we're going to move this into here so as we move that into there we're going to say if the data is equal right so if this basically just going to drag this over here if it's not equal we're going to load it in there let's get that right here and I think that loaded in right there let's get that out of there so put that at zero and then what we're going to do here is we're going to do a reset so in timer we're going to do a reset we're going to reset this timer right here so what we're saying is that if the data stops talking and if you compare it against itself if it's not equal to it's going to move itself into that now if it stops for any reason this timer won't, won't reset it will automatically start timing and then once it hits two and a half seconds it will fault out I can prove that by basically going over here and you know, basically coming in here to properties hitting it uh, basically stopping the communication I'm going to inhibit the module this will stop communication this will come over here and as soon as this stops communication which I don't believe it has yet let's see if we can drop it over here oh, let's come over here and do that same thing here inhibit all right so we inhibit so you see that data stopped flowing and then we got a watchdog fault so we can easily come back in here change this back from inhibit to usage and then it starts resetting now it's just that simple to set up a watchdog but I want to go ahead and show you on you know there's many different atmospheres on how to do a watchdog you could just do a, a basic timer but in our atmosphere we're going to do this right we're, we're showing one implementation of this right so let's go ahead and, and do another timer right and this is the machine 2 we're going to do the exact same thing in machine 2 we're going to call it I mean we can really call it the same thing if we want to we'll call this because it's in machine 2 it's in a different processor watchdog timer this keeps it what you're doing in one and what you're doing in the other it keeps it consistent and it keeps it easy to read for somebody by coming behind you now every watchdog is done differently so please understand that I'm showing you one instance of a watchdog and we're going to basically say if it's not equal to then we're going to move that data into that data and then clear that data so in that case we're going to instead of using a clear we're going to use a reset for the timer because that's how you would do a timer you wouldn't clear it I mean you could but you would use a reset to reset it all the time now again we put a value of two and a half seconds and then we're coming over here and we're do same exact implementation we'll call that watchdog compare we'll do watchdog compare and a dent is a dent again we're comparing the same data type against the same data type we want to see the data we're getting from processor one so what's consumed from them and then we want to basically move it into the compare if it's not equal right well if the data is flowing it's not going to be equal it's always going to be a good data type it's always going to be flowing back and forth right now it's not loading anything right now because obviously I haven't uh, haven't finalized the edits but in that atmosphere it's just that easy so now we're going to come over here and say if the watchdog happens to go high then we're going to come in and trigger a fault again this will be a com fault so this will say com fault real simple real easy and making sure the data is flowing so this is one way to do it right so now we have data flowing this direction and we have data flowing this direction put these side by side so you can see the the implementation of how this is done now again um, I just think it's better just just to see it and let's shrink this down just a little bit and get these two over so you can see the wire wider spectrum all right so let's scoot this over just a little bit 
All right, so you see the way that's done. And you see the data is flowing back and forth, back and forth. At any given time, if I were to inhibit one of these, you would see that data drop. Okay, and when you see that data drop, the fault becomes active, and that's when you have a fault. Now, again, that could be from breaking communications. It could be somebody pulled the processor. It could be from, let's just say, uh, Ethernet break, uh, Ethernet card, or some kind of communication lag, or the system is just too heavy, uh, meaning it's just too much data to actually you know, flow through, and it needs more time. Again, when it comes down to it, generally when we do these, this timer, this watchdog timer, can be set up to five seconds. I've seen in large scale systems where they're set at five seconds, but I'm showing you how to set up produced and consumed in a watchdog timer environment really simply by having it multiply the processor that it's sending the data from is multiplying, it's basically adding one to itself on the scan rate. And then when it overfills and it hits this last data, it's going to reset the data, it's gonna clear it. And then we're coming over here to the secondary side and we're saying we're using that data and we're comparing that data in against something inside of our processor in this processor so a machine in the instance of what we're doing right here if machine one is adding against itself come in here and then we're going to go look in machine two we're going to compare machine one's data against a watchdog compare which basically is just a compare value it's the same data type as what we used so in processor one the data we're manipulating over here we're adding up over here it should be the same data that we're having using down here when this is not equal to what we have in, in, in machine 2 then it's going to move machine 1 into machine 2 thus having a reset so that's going to have that reset so the timer never even comes on for that matter now as soon as that data stops flowing then the timer will start so if, you could just come in here and make an edit in here like say if you did an AFI, if we did a bit level and we just AFI'd this data right here, then we would not reset and then we our timer would come active because we, again, influence that active or that uh, that move function that we did. So that's, that's a real basic implementation of how you can do a simple watchdog between processor to processor. Again, machine one, is talking to machine two machine two is then talking to machine one so the data is flowing from machine one to machine two and then machine two to machine one so we actually have produced data on both sides and consumed data on both sides and i'm showing you this in real terms so if we look at the term up here now you can start seeing the data start flowing if you looked inside of your processor so you see this is our produced and consumed data and it's matching what we have over here. So hopefully that was helpful and explained exactly how to do a simple watchdog. You, for the, for the matter of it, you could have just did a timer and toggled a bit on and off um, and just did that. I mean, that's as, just as simple as a watchdog can be. In this environment, we're saying we want to actually see the data rolling we want to see multiple you know fluence of, of data so we're just given a, a different instance of how to do a watchdog um, there's many many different ways on how to do a watchdog so this is uh, just one way and one comparison type tool to use from one processor to another with produced and consumed data you also can do the same type thing with messaging like a message instruction but i will say this in a message instruction it's a lot slower the data generally inside of a produced and consumed data is going to be a lot quicker a lot more accurate um, but really the speed is the the thing about it so just keep in mind if you're using the same this same logic type with a message instruction instead of a produced consume then it's going to be a little bit slower right so keep that you're gonna have to up this timer a little bit more again most large-scale systems I see this anywhere between two and a half to five seconds completely fine so with that with all that said hopefully you got a lot out of that way to set up a watchdog with produce consumed data and we'll see you guys on the next one